it's, you know, being put in situations where you have to just absorb and learn. And some of them you go like, oh, messed that one up. And, and I've just been super lucky along the way that all of my managers have been very trusting and they've taken me along with them um, to big meetings and conversations or, or say, you know what? No, you've got this. Um, best of luck. And I've got your back no matter how it turns out wow. kind of thing. And so awesome. you learn and you have to be in it. And I think that's been one of the most crucial things is like, no matter what I do day to day, it comes down to your human interactions with everybody and in along all the steps of the line. Welcome to the Mastering Property Management Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Sarbit. Join me as we delve into candid conversations with industry experts to uncover their strategies and insights for achieving success in property management. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, let's elevate your property management skills together. Hi, everybody. This is Jared Sarbit with Mastering Property Management. Today, I have the honor and privilege of having Tanya Beefus on. Tanya Beefus is the general manager of Quadrille here in Calgary. Uh, Quadrille is a very large organization, global organization, which Tanya will uh, get into further. Uh, but Tanya, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, go through kind of you know some of the milestones along the way. How did you get into property management? And uh, you know, go f- as far back as you can, as you're willing to. And then tell us a little bit about where you're at today. Well, thanks for having me on. Uh, going way back to how I got into this industry, I started at Oxford 22-ish years ago now, and um, just as a receptionist, just fell into the industry. And um, I, was, I was trying to think of the other day of how I actually fell into it. And it, it was just really interesting because I, I thought I just fell into it, but my family had real estate. And, you know, growing up, my dad would be at some of the buildings and releasing them or, you know, collecting rent or clearing snow. And it didn't even like compute that that's what that was. And um, and then, yeah, now as an adult, and I'm like, oh, I kind of followed in the same footsteps and I didn't even realize that I did, which is kind of neat. Yeah. And then so I was at Oxford for seven and a half years. Um, I worked my way up through the company during that time and just took courses and absorbed all I could. And then I popped over to a strategic group for a quick stint and um, kind of learned a lot in the short time that I was there. And and then I had the the privilege of working at Hopewell, which was just a really super part of my career. I got to have my my fingers in all the different buckets. And yeah, I just, I learned so much in the four years that I was there and just a super cool group of people. That one was definitely, definitely one that I'm very happy that I, I got the the privilege to work there. Um, and then I got scooped up at um, Cadillac Fairview when they were building Calgary City Centre, which was um, their new office tower downtown Calgary. And it's, it's not very often that you get to be part of a brand new build nowadays, like of that kind of level. And I've been part of um, kind of like strip retail development and industrial in the past being developed, uh, but not an office tower. Mm. It was just so neat to be a part of and get to see and then get to onboard all the tenants and build the team around that. Yeah, that was that was also definitely one of the highlights of my career, I think, so far. And then Flash forward nine years, and I'm at Quadril, and yeah, managing their industrial portfolio for Calgary, and yeah, it's just it, it's a whirlwind, and it's it's pretty amazing. No kidding, and um, wow, what a great story! And I hear a, a theme of um, good experiences, learning so much along the way. Um, that's uh, so. So when you came on, like you know, at the beginning with Oxford as a receptionist, what was it like? That did did you feel like, hey, I want to. I want to, this is a, the culture I want to be a part of or the industry I want to be in, or or was it just that they invested in you or what, what kind of got you going at the beginning? I, I think it was, um, hey, it was my first like real like big girl job. Um, uh, you know, yeah. I got to work downtown and I got to wear fancy clothes and just be part of like that whole energy and buzz, which I loved. And then it yeah. was, yeah, the team that I had at the time um, and like a few of them I'm still like really close friends with. Um, it was just, it was such a great environment and I was surrounded by a bunch of people who they saw kind of what what value I had that maybe I didn't see yet in myself because I was so young. And yeah. Um, yeah, and they just invested in me and supported me and taught me everything that I was willing to learn. And, and then there was just no looking back after that. Like it was, yeah, I, was, right. I was in my jam, yeah. That's amazing. Talking about, you know, seeing the values that, that you have that you may have not recognized in yourself. 
what what are some of those? What are some of those key characteristics that that you know Tanya Beavis brings to the team that that uh, in the in the property management world that really you know allow have allowed you to shine and grow and develop in, you know into the place you are today? I think it's just just being yourself, and I show up. I'm honest. I'm human. I, I think is kind of my main characteristic is like whatever situation I'm put in, I'm just me. Like I'm I'm my brand and yes. you know, I'm I'm empathetic and I want to hear people's stories and I want to find the best outcome for everybody and just making sure that everything kind of works out, you know, with and like with my corporate hat on or, you know, my personal hat on. It's wanting to make sure that we can find a solution that everybody walks away at least okay with kind of thing Amazing. and um yeah and just i think always showing up being a little bit more curious than judgy um yeah. so that you can really mm-hmm. dig in and figure out what's actually behind someone's a little upset at you know us for something you know what are they actually upset about you know i know they're not yelling at me because there's a paper clip on the floor you know there's usually something yeah. more behind it and so it's I, I think just always being open to ask more questions and listen i love that I love that. More curious and judgy. That's gold right there. Thanks for yeah. sharing. <laughs> that, that's really good. And um, so when you were like, you know, learning, like, you know, you, you mentioned a lot of time learning, learning, learning along the way. Can you, can you think of some things that really stood out as far as what, what did you learn? Uh, I mean, obviously it's multitude, like there's the actual day to day, you know, kind of operation side, but was there, is there more that you, that you really took away from all these different experiences to, that you, that you have right now with, that you bring to Quadrilk? The common theme you'll probably see is I bring everything back to people you yeah. know you can you can learn spreadsheets you can learn you know how to calculate rent or or those kind of things um but it's learning people i think is mm-hmm. um, the most important part you know how do you manage a team and help them grow and how do you have difficult conversations and and still be professional about it or not take things personally and you know and that's not something that you can just sit down and have somebody go oh well textbook you know chapter I mean, one this is how you deal with people it's, yeah. you know, being put in situations where you have to just absorb and learn. And some of them you go like, oh, mess that one up. And yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. And I've just been super lucky along the way that all of my managers have been very trusting and they've taken me along with them um, to big meetings and conversations or, or said, you know what? No, you've got this um, best of luck and I've got your back no matter how it turns out wow. kind of thing. And so awesome. you learn and you have to be in it. Yeah. And I think yeah. um, that's been one of the most crucial things is like, no matter what I do day to day, it comes down to your human interactions with everybody and in yeah. and, and along all the steps of the line. I love that. I love that. Yeah, that's really good. I, I had similar experience, you know, when I started managing restaurants, that's where I really learned how to manage, you know, work with people and <laughs> For me, like the first year of management, I, I struggled so much. I made so many mistakes and I was a jerk because I took it way too serious. And But, but through those <laughs> mistakes and realizing everyone hated me and didn't, you know, like, didn't want me around, <laughs> I realized, oh my goodness, like I need to either get out of here or drastically change who I am and learn. And um, there's a lot of mistakes along the way, but you're right. It, it's kind of how, being in those experiences and being empowered to that's make right. mistakes, having great leaders around you. And that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, very, can you tell me a little bit about, so, so you said you, you oversee um, the Quadrille Industrial. Mm-hmm. Um, t- can you tell me a little bit about Quadrille um, in general and then also just kind of, you know, your you, what, your portfolio a little bit? Yeah. So Quadrille, as you mentioned, is a big company. We're one of the big handful of players in the real estate industry. Um, super lucky that I was chosen for this position because it, it's just an absolutely amazing team. Uh, we've got residential, commercial, industrial and um, our industrial portfolio, we've got just uh, like approximately 5.5 million square feet right now, just in the Calgary area alone. Um, yeah, wow. And and more development on the way. It's wow. um, yeah, there, there's just so much and so much to look forward to. Um, yeah, 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 I am pretty excited. Awesome, very very cool. Um, you're also involved in BOMA, uh, I believe, uh, and you're, you're, I believe you're on the board there. You know, what motivated you to, to join BOMA, uh, BOMA Calgary, uh, and what do you find most rewarding uh, within the role working with BOMA? Um, yeah, I've been a part of BOMA my entire career. Wow. Yeah, I've been very lucky again that every company I've been at has been a big supporter. And so they've encouraged me to um, network and be involved years and years of being involved on various levels. I joined um, the Environmental Health and Safety Committee. I was going to say, oh, it was like X amount of years ago, but it was like two decades <laughs> ago. 
And it was on that committee that I met um, two of my like best friends um, that wow. are still right now. And and after that, then I joined a next gen committee and you know made even like more friends and just some really amazing people and got to just be involved in so much and and just like the networking and those opportunities that Bulma has um, provided me that yeah. when I was offered the chance to be on the board, I was just. I was just so passionate about what I could then give back to everyone else in their careers um, that I wow. received through Bulma. There's just been so many interactions that I'm so grateful for and so many people that I never would have met had it not been for a Bulma event, like getting to be on the board as a director. And then I've been treasurer for the last two years and then I'm uh, chair elect next. And yeah, I just I feel so honored that they would view me to be in that position. And it's just wonderful. Amazing, amazing. So it sounds like it's really the relationships that you, the, the the value there is just yeah. some incredible relationships with likely like minded, uh, you know, people that are going through similar you know successes and challenges and experiences uh, that you are. And um, yeah, good for you for dedicating for such a long time. Uh, it sounds like multiple decades <laughs> uh, to to an organization, and and obviously seeing the payoff for now where you're where you're at, and almost going to be chair elect soon, and that's that's amazing. Uh, yeah, it's very very good. It's been really great. And um, yeah, and I just, I, I want to be able to encourage everyone else to yeah be part of Bulma or be part of whatever kind of association and, and just get like that networking in and the exposure and, you know, and whether it is people that are like-minded or um, sometimes even better if they're not, because then they challenge all your views. Um, yeah, there's just, there's just so much you get from it. Amazing. Awesome. Again, the theme of learning, always yeah, learning. Well, and I, I can hear it right from the beginning to now. So that's awesome. Um, can you tell me, um, you know, I know that BOMA has various events uh, throughout the year. Um, can you highlight some of the signature events uh, and initiatives um, that members can look forward to uh, over the next coming time? Yeah. And so um, BOMA just hosted uh, BOMA Ski Day, which was uh, March 15th. Always an amazing day. This past year, it was like bluebird for most of the day. It was so hot and sunny and it was an incredible day. Great turnout. We've got AGM coming up in April. Um, Lots of luncheons. And then the Bulma Buckaroo, which is put on by the Next Gen Committee. That one's always a must. You have to go. Uh, The Christmas luncheon is always fantastic. Um, And then in between, I mean, uh, unless you're not looking for it, there's always an event or something that one of the committees is putting on, you know, like next gen and like their trivia nights or their panel sessions or there's information sessions. And yeah, there's, there's something for everybody pretty much every month. It's awesome. Very, very good. Yeah. We actually happen to be the uh, platinum sponsors of the Buckaroo Bash. Oh, uh, we did oh. it for, yeah, for, we did it for our first time this past summer. We're doing mm-hmm. it again this summer because it was so much fun and such yeah. a success. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and so you're you're also um, completing your Bachelor of Commerce right now, is that correct? At Athabasca University, that um, is, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. So so you know you're doing that, uh, you know you're on Boma Boma Calgary board, uh, you know a general manager of Quadril. You know how how do you balance the demands um, of your academic pursuits uh, with your other responsibilities? I think that's always something that is never like a good balance, and you had to figure out. And I know that my opinion on this differs from other people's. But I I think, you know, me slowly getting my um, commerce degree that's benefiting me, you know, if it takes X amount of years or, you know, 20, whatever it is and takes every individual. Um, But you have to kind of, I think, balance work and life first. And then I supplement with that. Um, You know, it's it's a lot. Well, it's a huge priority. Um, When I was first starting you know, you're super dedicated and you're motivated. And you're like, whoa, I'm going to take all the courses. I'm going to crush this. Uh, and then my mom passed away. And, you know, so that crippled my entire soul. And so school was, it, it just wasn't a priority, right? So that slows things down. And then um, you get yourself back up and you're like, well, I'm going to crush this again. Like, oh, watch out for me. And then, um, yeah, I went through a divorce. So, so it's like, okay, maybe I'm just like, slow down for a minute again and yeah, you know and yeah, so it's well. always like it's finding the time to really push and when you can and then recognizing when okay like this year i'm i'm gonna slow down and maybe i won't you know hit my personal goal of 
finishing so much, but I'm still going to get yeah. it. And, and not wow. kind of beating myself wow. up because, I mean, yeah. we're human, life happens. Yeah, I'd rather focus on family and my health and yeah. um, stuff like that. And then I'll know yeah. that everything also followed. Yeah, 100%. And let me first say by, uh, you know, may your mother rest in peace. And I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, wow. Well, that's, uh, that's a very, very um, introspective perspective and very, very wise, I think. And um, you're right that the family, need, the family needs to come first before, before anything and that balance. So I think you've, it sounds like you've taken a really smart approach to it. That's for sure. Um, yeah. Um, so can you tell me that, you know, like in your, in your bachelor of commerce degree, as you're taking it, like what, what are you finding applicable, um, to your day-to-day in quadrille? I hear, I hear a stat, something like 85% of what you take in school, if you're not applying it to something. It kind of goes out the window. Um, but if you're applying it to something, it's significantly higher where it's much more applicable. Um, so are there some things that you, that you would say, and by the way, if I'm, if that 85%, I might be wrong in that stat. So don't, 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 uh, Google that on me, but, yeah. but, <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, exactly. But, but, um, yeah, what, what would you say is like, what you're finding applicable as far as your commerce degree and, and what you're doing in your day to day? I mean, there's, there's a thousand I, things that are applicable from what you learn. And, and I think in kind of any program that you take, I, I think it's it's like learning how to manage deadlines and time management. And, you know, when you feel like you're hitting a wall, it's digging in and researching more and working your way around it. I think it's, you know, asking for help when you're stubbing your toe on something or you just don't understand something. Um, and I think those are just key concepts that we we learn no matter what kind of course we're taking that are applicable in every single thing we do. Every single you can talk about math skills or writing essays or whatnot, but I think the things that directly impact our day to day are those types of things. Whereas time management, it's perseverance, yes. it's um, yes. yeah, it's just like asking for help and, and knowing it's okay. Amazing, amazing, very cool. Um, what what unique challenges uh, and opportunities do you believe the new generation face, faces? Uh, you know, as you mentioned, you you were uh, not long ago part of Next Gen in Boma, so you are still in that you know newer generation. So, what are some of the challenges um, and and uh, compared to you know previous generations that that we're facing now? I think, um, I mean, every generation has its challenges. And I think what will be interesting for this next one coming up is just the whole like hybrid workplace um, and still learning kind of environment and the opportunities. I mean, there's definite benefits from being able to work from home and being remote when you need to a thousand percent, but there's no no replacement or for being in a workplace and hearing the conversations that are in the cubicle next to you or in the lunchroom or just the interactions and people seeing you in the hall being like, oh, like, hey, big giant head down the hall. I'm here, you know, like when it right. comes to promotion, yeah. time, like recognize my face and my name. And yes. um, I, I think so many people that are in that younger generation and are still kind of in this this stage, I, I think that's what they're missing out on. And I don't think that we'll see what that impact is for another couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting because because you you spoke about having that mentorship, having you know the ability to learn and around others and all of that, and you might still get that as a newcomer. But you're right, pro- probably to a very different uh, degree. Yeah. So yeah, very interesting. Okay. Um, so how, how do you think like, you know, these young newcomers in property management, like how can they overcome that? Um, I guess I, I would guess that you'd probably say go to BOMA and, and you know, connect with people through there. But, <laughs> you but walk any right other... into it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, any, anything else that you'd recommend that how do they overcome that? I think, yeah, it's definitely like networking if you get the chance. But yeah. if you have the option to go into the office, I think it's it's going into the office, even if it's just a little bit more than you were before. Um, yeah. it's, it's making those face-to-face kind of connections. Um, you know, if you have tenants, you know, it, it's going to them in person or calling them on the phone instead of just a, an email or a, like a video chat. I, I think it's, it's just really pushing yourself to make those connections and be visible. And I think then that makes you just kind of crave that interaction more too. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And, on, and on that note, uh, my next question is actually about technology. In what ways um, uh, do you think technology is reshaping the property management uh, practices, which you've kind of just answered a little bit of that? And how do you, how do you personally leverage technology uh, yourself? Well, because I'm 80 years old on the inside, 
Um, I'm not <laughs> very technologically savvy. Um, <laughs> in my last company, we used uh, the Google platform and figure that out. That was great. Um, I'd never been yeah. on Microsoft Office before. And at Quadrille, it's all Microsoft. And so it was like learning a new language. And it's taken right. so long. And I'd be like, well, how do you do this? I don't know what a Teams yeah. is. Um, <laughs> I can't say I'm leveraging that as much as I could be yet. I'm still figuring that out. But I think technology-wise, like it is fantastic now that everyone can be a little bit more remote because I think we're set up on our laptops or whatnot um, more cohesively. And so, you know, I can go to a tenant meeting or a construction meeting or something and I can pull everything up and be like, oh, this is what you're looking at um, or this is what the information you're looking for. And, you know, I can I can answer you quicker and more fulsome. And I think those types of interactions will only improve with the technology that we have now. Yeah, amazing. Very cool. Um, community engagement is a crucial aspect of, of both uh, community uh, design and, and, and property management. Um, how do you foster strong relationships uh, with the communities that, that you serve? Um, so, you know, beyond beyond the, you know, the BOMA that you're connecting with, but but how about like specifically to, to your your portfolio that you're working with? Yeah, and that's a little bit of um, a goal of mine, I guess, is, is yeah. how do I elevate and and kind of reshape the industrial tenant engagement and community place building. Because in an office building, it was, I'm not saying it's easier, but it's just different because everyone's in one kind of tower. And um, it was just kind of, you could pass by people every single day through the lobby. Um, whereas industrial, like, yeah, they're they're kind of all spread out all over the place. And, and yeah, just so the approach is a little bit different. And so it's your typical stampede lunches and events like that. We're looking at building community gardens in our industrial centers and, you know, really? an opportunity for the staff there to either, you know, have some fresh vegetables for themselves or partake in a donation program back to the food bank. Uh, wow. And so I think I, I'm hoping that will kind of build into something even more. And then we're, you know, we're kind of researching other ideas on how we can kind of expand on on our community building for the um, tenants. And then I think it's, you know, as a team, um, Quadrille does a lot of volunteer work and, you know, and so whether, it's, you know, you're going and you're volunteering at the food bank or um, women's shelters or whatnot, I think, you know, fostering those types of interactions is also really important because it just, it it spreads the community out and, and just make sure that yeah. you're remembering everybody. Yeah. Wonderful. Very, very good. Um Assuming janitorial is is uh, one of your largest ongoing costs, uh, and, and as you know, I own a janitorial company, so <laughs> I, I have to throw this in once in a while. Uh, you know, um, what what do you look for in janitorial companies uh, when you're when you're going to tender? Uh, you know, obviously there's the RFP and there's a different scoring, but what do you personally like to see? I, I think like I mean, so not necessarily through the RFP process, but it's it's finding that company that is going to be your partner. Right. I mean, the, the janitorial team, holy moly, do they have, I think, one of like the hardest jobs, you know, and, and yeah. they're the people who are on the ground are most often your first point of contact for a lot of the tenants yeah. in the buildings. And, you know, so if, if you don't invest in those people and make them feel heard and valued and like capable, then all the interactions that they spread from there reflect that. And yes. Um, yes. yeah, and, and so I think it's just it's so important to be able to, you know, have the manager or like you, who your customer service person is with the contractor, just be someone who's really good at communicating as well and being kind of, yeah, just just I, I guess maybe similar mind thought to me is, you know, how you interact with your team and how you support your team. And um, and again, like knowing that someone's not yelling at you because there's a paperclip on the floor. Um, yeah. You know, like if the janitorial teams didn't do the work that they do as well as they do, could you imagine? Um, it, it would just yeah. be chaos. It'd be mayhem. Yeah. And here's all you said. No one would be mopping up. It'd be awful. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's 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 wonderful to hear. I love hearing that. That's for sure. And you know, we we've always said that you know, like being treating your people with the utmost respect. It's not just a good thing to do, which it absolutely is a critical, but it's also a good business thing to do because you just get better results. You have less turnover. Uh, you know, like the at the end of the day, the 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 results to the client show through by happier, you know, happier people. So yeah. 
Um, that 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 is, and it, it is. You're right. It's sometimes hard to tangibilize that through an RFP. Um, it, so, it really yeah, it's is. Good right? it's, yes. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. All right. Now for some uh, fun, more fun questions. Um, so, if you can manage any property in the world, uh, what what property would that be, and why? Um, yeah, this one. I I would have to say, I I love the heat. Uh, my spirit animal yeah. is a lizard. And I just want to be on a beach somewhere. So if I had to manage like a, a hotel chain and my worry was too many geckos and sand in the lobby, sign me up. Um, <laughs> I, I awesome. can happily do that one. Amazing. Amazing. Do you have uh, any, any specific region like in the that you'd want to be in or that you really have your heart set on or? No, I, I don't think I'm stuck on any. Um, okay, as long as it's got the weather. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went to Bali years ago and had the most incredible mm-hmm. experience. And I mean, if I mean, have to go back and do all that there, yeah, I also went. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Do you sometimes question that we're kind of crazy living in Canada with this weather? You know, it's funny. There's times where I'm like, yeah, what are we thinking? Like, I'm I'm done with this weather, yeah. and then, yeah. um, but but I also love all outdoor sports all year round. Yeah. And so right. You're a skier. Really bored if I yeah winter. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> so you nice to go for both. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you'll never leave Canada for good. So oh, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And then and then my last question. Um, you know, if you could recommend um any any book to aspiring property managers, and it doesn't have to be a property management book per se. Um, what book would that be and why? So Daring to Lead by Brene Brown. I think that one's really good. There's just lots of really good nuggets about um, being human, being vulnerable, um, just being you and um, and having that as part of your leadership structure. Um, you know, very different from like way back in the day where leadership was a very different thing. Um, it was a little bit yeah, and um, yes. a little bit more removed. And so that book, I think, yes. is just a really great one to um, just... It's stuff everybody already knows, but it just reminds you and brings it up and makes it yeah. a little bit more relatable. Yes. And then I just started reading. It was um, given to me. Um, it's Atomic Habits. Uh, yeah, I can't remember the author. Me, me either, actually. But I ha- I've read it as well. I've done the audiobook of it. Yeah. yeah. It was, and and that one. Um, so I'm just starting on it. But I, I think that one's going to be fantastic. And just, yeah, what yeah. can I do to tweak my day to be that much more efficient and procrastinate totally. less? Totally. Yes, exactly. Yeah, we could all we could all do that with all the distractions out there. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's awesome. Yeah, that that book was really useful for me. That's for sure. So what would be your favorite book? Oh my goodness! Oh, yeah, I wasn't ready for that one. <laughs> um, no, honestly, yeah, um, you know, usually when someone asks me that, it's usually one of the more recent books that I've read that it comes to my mind. I just uh, finished Shoe Dog. Uh, that's a memoir of Phil Knight, got a Nike. Um, what a story! Like that guy. Um, he went through so many struggles before he became successful that people don't know about. And, um, you know, and he, he had to, oh, like he was such a big dreamer. And so I could really relate with, with that. And he yeah. and just never, just never gave up and never gave up. Um, right now I'm reading, um, uh, the Lululemon book, uh, oh, Black okay. Stretchy Pants, like, uh, by Chip Wilson, um, and, uh, his memoir and loving that i don't know if you know this i didn't know but he grew up in calgary oh i didn't know um, i had no idea either um but like a lot of the book is his experiences in calgary um he founded west beach uh, which is like a surf uh snowboard yeah. and skate uh, company so yeah so i bought shorts from there i remember years ago when i was a kid buying uh, uh board shorts because i was on my way to australia uh from there i had no idea that was the lululemon founder so yeah. oh, um, well, another cool. another yeah another great book um, I could go on, I could go on and on, but we'll stop, we'll stop with those ones because those are my, my most recent reads. So, yeah. um, but, uh, yeah, great. So how can, um, listeners, you know, like there might be a property manager out there that's, you know, looking to, to really grow and to, you know, to get to the level that you are today. Um, how can they reach out to you if, if, if you're, if you're open to that and where oh, can they absolutely. connect with you? Um, I awesome. mean, LinkedIn's always a, an easy way because everyone's got access to it. Um, they can email yeah. me, um, but yeah, LinkedIn's probably the easiest. And um, Perfect. yeah, I a thousand percent. I'm happy to go for coffees or phone calls or or whatnot and and help if anybody has questions. Amazing, you're awesome. Well, thank you so much, Tam. I'm so honored to have you on, and uh, I look forward to connecting with you and seeing you at the Boma events, especially the Buckaroo Bash. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks, Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.